Man, I'm so excited to share today. I'm so excited to be here with my family. Let me just start out by saying that uh, you guys have the power of Jesus inside of you. If you've accepted him as, as your Lord, you have that same power. I was brushing my teeth this morning, and I just got that song, like the same power that conquered the grave lives in me. Uh, and, I, and I wish that I had Preston's voice, but I do not. So I start singing it, and my two boys are right there with me. One of them is uh, 14 months old. The other one's three years old. And I start singing, and my 14-month-old just looks at me and starts, and starts, starts like walking. He just learned how to walk, by the way. So he's like running away from me. And then my other three-year-old comes up to me, and he just, Daddy... Stop that. I'm like, oh, but, but I love the song, though. So, uh, so it's, just, it's, it's just funny how, our, how, I don't know, I love my kids. But, but you know what? How many of you parents, are there any parents out here? I mean, there's, there's, there's probably a lot of parents here, right? You will not withhold anything from your children. Any, any children in here? Everyone has parents, right? <laughs> right? I don't know. Pretty simple. But your parents will, will, will withhold nothing from you, and that's that's what Jesus wants for you. He wants you to be the best version of yourself, which is just glorifying him in every single thing you do. And so I just want to kind of share my story. I have been here for about four years at the church. <clears throat> when I came to the church, I was struggling. Like I was, I was beat up. I was tired. We had just kind of uh, cycled out of four years of, of youth ministry. My wife and I, we uh, purchased our first house, which is a fixer-upper. And we took the kitchen down to the studs, and we were remodeling it. And did I mention we had a, 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 a brand new one-month-old baby boy, <laughs> you know? And then, and then uh, you know, I'm working two jobs. I'm, I'm working real estate. And, and, and there's just so many things going on in my life. I was busy. And I'm like, God, like, why? I, like, I would ask. I'm like, why, why am I where I am? Like, what, where am I in my life? I, I, don't, I don't feel like I'm glorifying you, but I just came from serving you. Like, I, I, and I'm burnt out. And I would serve, and I would serve, and I would serve. And, and what happened was I came to this church, got involved in a community group, uh, and, and connected with, with Brian Emmons over there. He was a connections pastor uh, before Mark. And, and then I got connected in another community group. And then I started playing on the Rock softball team. And then I made some friendships and relationships. And then I got invited into a discipleship group. And, and through that, I started to look at Jesus' life. And I said, you know what? I'm not perfect. I don't need to be perfect. But my identity was in works, was in working. And then what would happen is I wasn't... I wasn't doing what I thought Jesus wanted me to do to the full capacity. So then I was unworthy and I would have guilt and shame and, oh man, I, I need to do more for you, God. And then if I do more, Jesus will love me more. <laughs> and how many of you guys know that that is not true? Yeah. That is not true at all. And so as I start to look at the Father and I just spend time with Jesus, it was just an amazing time because then I learned that I just focus on him and his word and, and what he thinks about me. And, and my identity is through him and not through my works and not through success and not through approval and not through money. And, and, and that's, just, that's just one of those crazy lessons you learn where it just, it, the, the switch goes on in your mind. And what was so amazing is that as we're going through this discipleship program, you know, Brian shares something with me and, and we talked about, we talked about when Jesus was baptized by John the Baptist and he goes and he's baptized and he comes out and heaven opens up and God says, this is my son who I am well pleased and so, like, I just want to share with you today, like, that's how Jesus feels that way about you. Like, he's so pleased with you. And so I realized, wow, like, he's, he loves me no matter what. Like, whether I do something or don't do anything, like, he loves me and he's pleased with me. I don't have to perform for anyone. I don't have to do anything other than be loved by my father. So I start spending time with them, and, and my wife and I are struggling at the time. We, we were heavily in debt, and, and real estate was not working the way that I wanted it to, but I knew how to be busy. But how many of you know that you can be as busy as you want, but that doesn't mean that you're more successful? Like, you can make yourself busy, right? And that's what we do. And so I said, I said like, I, I started just having conversations with God. Like, what do you want me to do? And he says, he says I want you to bring me with you to work. <laughs> How many of you have ever been called out like that? Like, uh, but, ah, but it's not really the place, right? It's like, okay, I'll go to work, and then I'll come home, or I'll go to church, right? Or I can only pray with someone when, they're in, when, when I'm in church, right? And that's not what he's called us to do. 
And so, and so he started to say, bring, bring me with you to work. And I'm like, uh, okay. So, you know, I start going and, and praying in the morning, you know, uh, uh, before work. And, and, you know, I had an agent cuss me out for something I didn't do. And I just got off the phone and prayed with him and loved on him. And, and before you know it, I start to be able to pray with people in my real estate office. And, and then as I, as I start to focus more on, on the father, right, and, and, and not myself and my own life, you know, last year I was able to help more families than I've ever helped, and this year I doubled that, which I didn't even think was possible. And so, like, it, it's, it's going over to every single area of my life because I'm just giving my life to him. And the funny thing is, is I get led to a place like Home Goods, and I'm, like, driving. I leave an appointment. I'm driving down, down the street, and I'm like, I got to go to Home Goods. I, I don't, I never go to Home Goods. Like, that's, that's, a, that's where chicks go to shop. Like, <laughs> guys don't go to Home Goods, right? But... But, but honestly, I, I, went, I, went, I went to Home Goods, and I'm like walking through, and I'm like, what am I doing here? I guess I'll get some thank you cards. I need those. I go to the thank you card section. There's a lady there. I get in a conversation with her. She starts to share with me that she has, she has severed nerves in her back, and she hasn't, she's been out of work for a year, and she can't even touch her toes, and, and she's about to have this crazy surgery, and it's going to be this long recovery. And I just said, well, that's not God's will for you, so let's just pray for you, and he'll heal you. And I just, I just stepped out, and I prayed for her, and the power of God fell, and she was healed right away, and literally, okay, do something you couldn't do, and she just, she's, and she starts crying, just like, wow, I haven't been able to touch my toes, you know, for this song, and so, and so it, it started to ignite a fire and a hunger inside of me to say, Lord, I just want to, I just want to give you the glory for everything I do, and do more of those things, and so, I start pursuing him, and I go to this Azusa Now conference uh, where there's like 120,000 people getting together, you know, praying, praying for, for the world. And, and th there was just amazing things that happened there. But this guy named Sean Bowles comes out, and he pulls out his cell phone, and he's like, is there a Stan and June Smith here? And it's 120,000 people, right? I'm like, where is he going with this? Like, what is this weirdo doing? Pulls out his cell phone, says, Stan and June Smith here. And, and, and someone like 20 feet away from me is like, yeah, that's us. And then he says, does January 2nd mean anything to you? Yeah. He's all, is that your anniversary? Yeah. And like everything he was saying was right. And I'm like, this is, this is staged. Like, <laughs> let's be honest. Like how many of you have seen something and you're like, that's not real? Like, nah. Yeah. And so, and so he's, he says, does Winding Way mean anything to you? And they're like, they're like yeah, that's where we're from. And, he's, and so then he starts to prophesy over them and say, like, like God is calling you back to your roots. And you're going to go home and you're going to transform the culture and, and this and that. And, and it was just amazing because I still didn't believe it even after that, it, you know, just to be honest. But then he did it with like six or seven more people. And everything he said was 100% accurate. And I'm like, what the heck is that? Well, it's called a word of knowledge. Like he led with the word of knowledge. Jesus shared information with him to, to, to share his love with people. And so I started to say, how can I share my love with people? So I came back and I read his book, Translating God. And then I went to a, a training and I started pursuing God like I never had before, just spending time with him. And he started speaking to me. And I started to, started to get words for people. And I started to feel things for people. And uh, I don't know. I, it's really weird. I get things either when I'm in the shower or when I'm, like, on my way to, to take a whiz, you know. Like, like I'm, I'm, I'm on my way, you know. And it's just the weirdest thing. I, maybe because you're not thinking, you know, when that, you're just not thinking. And, and it, it, well, it's true. I'm sorry, number one, when I go number one. But, but the crazy thing is is that I, I, I just remember like I was at Pete's Coffee with, 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 a, with a member of this church and, and uh, I just go to the bathroom and I feel like I'm having like a heart attack would be the best way to describe it. Like I literally could not breathe. I'm like, what is this? Like I can't. And, and really I, I go back and I'm like, okay, well this isn't normal. So I go back and I sit down with the guy that I'm, that I'm having coffee with and I'm like, hey, this is gonna sound completely crazy but I'm just working on hearing from God and, and I feel like this crazy pressure, stress, like anxiety. It feels like anxiety. Do you have any anxiety right now? And he just looks at me with like the most blank look on his eyes. Like, like how do you know that? And, and he, says, he says, I've been struggling with anxiety for two weeks. I've lived a crazy life. I was homeless for a good part of my life, but like I've lived a crazy life and I've never struggled with anxiety. And so I just said, well, God wants to heal you of that. And so we pray. And as we start praying, the joy of the Lord fell down. And we were both giggling, laughing, like in the middle of Pete's. And people are like, 
And I didn't care. I was, my eyes were closed. It didn't even matter, right? <laughs> so, so, so I'm praying, and all of a sudden, the anxiety's gone. And, and, and he's healed of it. And then I start talking about how he's going to go and change infrastructure and build third world countries and, and do amazing things for God that he's called him out of, out of this region and all these other things. And I'm like, that's nothing that I would ever come up with. But like, I, it, it's just the, the amazing joy of the Lord came out. And, and I tell you that story to say that like, I haven't gone to seminary. I'm not like, I'm just like you guys. I'm a normal person. And all I did was pursue God and what he wanted for my life. And he started to share things with me. And he wants to do the same exact thing for you. And he, every single one of you. And, and then you're probably like, oh, well, you know, like, I'm not like that. I'm an introvert. Well, you know, can, can, can you bake cookies for someone? Can you give them a compliment? Can you smile? Right? Do, can any of you smile? Like, tur, turn, turn to the person next to you and they say, don't smile or your face will crack. Like, and try, and try not to smile. Like, it's the craziest thing. Like, everybody can just Focus on God and let him lead you to the opportunities that you have in your life with the people you love, with the people here at church, with your community, like everybody plays a part. And the second I took my focus off of the works, of, of just focusing on performance and working and, and uh, unworthiness and all, these, all this crazy cycle and I just focused on God, he started to transform my life. And I get everywhere I go, he's talking to me. And all I do is I go up to some, I, I go up in, into a place and I say, I say, Lord, like, how do you want to love this person? Like, how do you want to love her? Like, like, show me how to love them the way that you love them. I want to see through your eyes. And I just, I just sit there and, and just wait. And, and I do that every single day. And he shares things for me. And sometimes it's crazy profound and there's healing and prophecy. And sometimes there's nothing. But all I can do is just love other people and pray for them and love on them. And, and, and just the, the amazing things that happen out of that. I'm just so excited uh, to see this body because there is a shift. We are called to operate in our authority. And there is a shift happening. And so uh, I, I just encourage every single one of you to just, to just focus on God and what he has for you. And, and it, like, every single area of my life has increased exponentially. My marriage, my relationship with my kids, my relationship with God, everything. And, and he wants that for you. He wants abundance for you in every area of your life. So thank you so much for letting me share, guys. Thank you.